Hey, this is Dave from the Adobe Character Animator team. And in this tutorial, we're gonna walk through creating a custom Photoshop character. So we're gonna start with a blank template, and then we're gonna slowly replace different parts, the eyebrows, the shirt, um, the hand positions, all of that stuff, and create our own custom puppet. Now we're gonna to try to keep things really simple. You don't have to be a Photoshop expert. You don't have to know anything about Photoshop actually, hopefully, or any uh, animation concepts or anything like that. We're gonna walk through everything step by step, talk about each part, the mouth, the eyes, uh, the hands, all of that stuff, and give you time to customize them and add your own character. So I'm gonna make one character, your character is probably gonna look completely different and that's okay. So if that sounds good to you, let's get started. All right, so when you're first getting started in Character Animator, the first screen you're gonna see when you open it up is this Start Workspace. If you're not seeing it, just click on Start up here in the workspace bar, and that's gonna take you to it. This is a ton of great uh, interactive tutorials and example puppets to learn how to do things like walk cycles or head turns or things like that. But for today's purposes, what we're gonna actually do is click this See More link over here. And if we do that, that is going to take us to the extra uh, character animator example puppets webpage. And this is where we put a lot of additional characters. In fact, lately we've been putting out one a new one every month. Uh, so you should check this page off and there's a lot of cool new stuff that happens. But for now, I'm gonna scroll down a little bit. I'm gonna find this character blank down here. Uh, this is a special, you know, bare bones uh, type of simple character that we're gonna use as a basis for creating our own character. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on download here under blank. That is gonna take me to a Creative Cloud page, actually my Creative Cloud page. And to download this blank.zip file, all I have to do is click the download icon up here. So let's do that. Once you've done that, locate your blank.zip file, double click it, open it up, and you should see two files inside of it, a blank Illustrator puppet uh, file and a blank Photoshop puppet file. A puppet file is basically a way to combine your original artwork, so usually your you know, Photoshop PSD file or Illustrator AI file, plus any character rigging and setup you've done in Character Animator. So this is a really valuable file because it's got the master artwork that you can you know, manipulate and edit and all the kind of you know, basic uh, rules that you're going to use later for animating. So uh, puppet files are great. This, all the puppets you know, on this screen back here, they're all dot puppet files. Um, on the website and everything, they're all puppet files. That's just how you share um, characters and it's easy to export as that. So we already did an Illustrator tutorial. Um, that was in a previous uh, tutorial. So if you're more interested in making a character in Adobe Illustrator, I would head on over to that tutorial instead. But for the purposes of today, uh, the Photoshop puppet is what we want. But I kind of want to get started with a new blank project, uh, not you know put it into any existing project that I might already have. So I'm going to go back to Character Animator on my Start Workspace and go ahead and click New Project over here. And that's going to open up, uh, you know, the ability to uh, create a new project. So Character Animator Project 87 is what I'm up to. It'll add a default name um, if you want. And I could call this whatever I want. So let's just call this uh, tutorial example. And I will click oh, Save. And what that does is open up a completely blank new project. And it's really boring because it's just me talking to myself in the webcam over here and all these panels are blank. So let's go ahead and bring in that Photoshop puppet um, to get things started. So the way I'll do that is go over to File, Import. And then I'm going to locate where that blank Photoshop puppet was and I'm going to click Import. So that's gonna bring in, we see in our project panel, this little pawn icon and it says blank Photoshop. That means a puppet has been imported into Character Animator. If I double click on this, it's going to automatically take me into rig mode. And this is kind of the X-ray view of your character. This is where you do a bunch of setup and structure. And we're gonna be coming back to this a lot in this tutorial. But for the time being, um, let's start to get our character animated and have it start moving around. And the way I'm gonna do that is add it to a scene. The way you add a puppet to a scene, so you can think of puppets as your actors and actresses and scenes as their stage that they're performing on. So select, just single click your um, puppet over here. And then down here in the bottom of the project panel, there's a little add to new scene icon. Go ahead and click on that. And that is going to open up the character in a new scene. Now, if everything's working totally perfectly and correctly, you should now see your character moving around and working with your own facial movements. If you're not seeing your webcam currently, um, you can click on this little three lined menu icon and your different, uh, different webcams should show up here. You also have a few other options, but uh, 
We're not gonna get into those uh, right now. Also, you'll wanna make sure that both of these are blue, your microphone and your webcam are both turned on. Uh, you should be seeing a green signal from your webcam, uh, from your microphone. And if you're, you don't see the right microphone input, uh, you can always go to character preferences, I believe that's edit preferences on PC, and you will see an audio hardware option which would allow you to select your correct input device. Now, the last project I was working on had a 1920 by 1080 scene, so this per character is gonna fit perfectly in that sort of scene. If your scene is different or you don't see this or your character feels like it's cut off a little bit, um, just single select, single click and select your scene over here. And when you do that, you will see its properties show up over here. And so I can change the width, the height, the frame rate um, to whatever I want just by dragging or clicking and typing into these. So I would suggest for the uh, purposes of this tutorial, keeping this at 1920 by 1080. Now, if your character is weirdly positioned on the screen or you wanna make it bigger or smaller or something like that, you can then select a uh, single click and select your character in the timeline down here, and that's gonna bring up its properties. So anytime you select something, you're gonna kind of see its properties show up on the right here. These are always kind of context sensitive depending on what you've selected. But if I select the puppet down here or this character down here in the timeline, I will see its properties. And by default, there's one prop uh, behavior that's twirled open. Behaviors are rules to a character. We'll get to that in a little bit, but this first one, transform. And this is a really basic one that allows you, if I click and drag over top of something like position X, to change the position of where I want my character, or position Y, or scale, or anything like that. So I can reposition and make my character as big or small, or whatever as I want. If you wanna get things back to their original settings, just click on these X's that appear, and that's gonna take you back to that original setting. I also have the ability to change the background color just by clicking on this little swatch down here um, and that allowed me to see things differently. So I'm just gonna go for the white background just I think that makes it a little bit clearer and brings the lines around this character to show up a little bit better. So yeah, so if everything is working properly, you should be seeing your character reacting to your own movements. Uh, over here in the webcam, if you click set rest pose, that's going to calibrate your character and kind of set them uh, in a zero position. So if I was over here and then I click set rest pose, it's gonna think this is my new zero position. I probably don't want that. I probably wanna be you know, looking directly at the camera, uh, click set rest pose, be in a comfortable position and use that as kind of your uh, you know, ground zero for all this stuff. But I should notice my eyebrows are moving with the character. As I look around with my pupils, uh, the character is looking as well. If I blink, the character should be blinking, head movements should be working, the lip sync should be following uh, my own lip movements and the jaw should be moving up and down as well. And I should be able with the mouse to click and drag a hand to do a wave or whatever type of gesture I want there as well. So this is all well and good, but unless you look exactly like this or the character you're thinking of looks like this, you're probably gonna wanna customize this character. And that's where we're going to start from. Um, personally, I find it really easy to start from a template like this and start to add your own uh, artwork over top of it or replacing artwork. And I think that leads to, you know, getting all the structure and naming conventions that Character Animator relies on to create a character um, to kind of know where the eyes are, where the mouth is, where the head is, all of that stuff. If you're just starting from scratch from a PSD or AI file, um, I feel like you, a lot of times we see people get into the weeds with, you know, things not being organized correctly. Their mouth is outside their head or their eyes are going outside of their, you know, their face and suddenly they run into all these issues. So better to start with a working thing that you can see is working properly and then slowly make modifications and learn how that changes over time. All right, so to get started editing this character in Photoshop, what I'm gonna do is single click, select the character up here, blank Photoshop, and then I'm going to go to uh, edit, edit original. And this will only show up if you have the puppet selected, not the scene. So make sure that puppet with the pawn icon is selected and then go to edit, edit original. So that edit original command is going to open up the original artwork. In this case, it's this file blank.psd. And I can see all my layers down here, all the artwork that it's referencing, referencing uh, is showing up down here. So I'm gonna be able to start customizing it, uh, which, is, which is great, the whole point of this. Um, your layout may look different to mine depending on your workspace. I'm actually gonna go up here in the upper right corner and click this little workspace icon and go to graphic and web. That's gonna get rid of a lot of these panels that I don't need and just focus on kind of my layer setup and uh, my, my character over here. All right, so let's take a closer look at this layer structure. Um, what we're gonna do is kind of walk from the top to the bottom, go over each part, the mouth, the eyes, the nose, all of that stuff, 
and customize each part as we go along. Um, and so you can kind of use this as a guide, follow along, open up this character um, as well, and uh, make your own additions. You don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. Feel free to be creative and do your own stuff. So the first thing you'll notice is everything's kind of grouped in these, these uh, very specific organizational pockets. So we've got a, a main group up here called plus blank. That's our main character group. And then inside we have a head and a body uh, directly inside. The head includes all the contents that are uh, inside the head and the body has all the body parts. Um, this is the general structure because what ends up happening is that anything that's inside this head group is gonna move with your own head movements. And that is going to in turn pull the body around. So if you do this exact setup and put all your head parts in here and all your body parts in here, that general movement and structure should work as you would expect. So twirling open the head, let's start to focus on the mouth. Um, and if you twirl open this mouth set, you will see it has a bunch of different uh, names down here. Neutral, ah, duh, uh, all of this different stuff. I'm gonna zoom in over here by uh, holding down Option on Mac, and that's Alt on PC, and just using my scroll wheel to zoom in, and then I'm hold down the space bar and drag to drag my character uh, around, just to get a closer view of everything. So uh, here I can see I have neutral, I've got an ah mouth, I've got a duh mouth. So what does all this mean? Well, these are the mouths that Character Animator is looking for when I'm talking, and it's gonna try to take whatever sound I'm saying and say, oh, that's an O sound, so I'm gonna do this mouth. Or this is a S sound, so I'm gonna do uh, this mouth. And you have you know, a bunch of different ones here. So this is a great set to start from. At, at this beginner level, I would say, we're not gonna dig too much into this. We don't need to make you know, a completely custom mouth set because this set of mouths, it actually works pretty well. We use it in a lot of our characters and it should be a good starting point. But if you uh, want to get into this, if you know your way around lip sync, you can totally feel free to, to jump in. And in fact, you know, if you wanted to start to you know, fool around with some of this stuff, so let's say with the L, I wanted to you know, make the tongue a different color. I could always do that and just color over top of that. Um, you might be able to you know, double click over here in the blank space, maybe click on color overlay and do something like that where you pick an overlay, pick a color um, and say, I want all my tongues to be blue. I want all my teeth to be red or you know, whatever you want. Add fangs to the character if it's a vampire, whatever sort of thing you want. But making a really great mouth set uh, takes a long time. It's gonna take at least a couple of hours, probably a lot more perfecting everything, lining everything up. So for now, I'm gonna say, let's just say this is good and uh, call it a day. So. So before I leave, I'm just gonna make a neutral the visible. Neutral is kind of your default state. So if you didn't want this character to smile for uh, his default state, you could turn this upside down, you can make it a uh, just a you know straight line, whatever you want, um, and that's fine too. But I'm cool with this, I like how this looks, so I'm gonna troll it open. Now this character also has a sad mouth, and if I make this visible, you'll see this is a whole other set of mouths, but they're all kind of upside down. They all look kind of sad. Um, and this is uh, just a really simple thing you can do to a character to make, add some extra emotion. So your character isn't always, you know, just smiling all the time and being happy about everything. Um, they all, you have the option of triggering this extra mouse set. So we'll show this in a little bit, but um, the basic idea is, uh, you know, you can, have as many different mouth sets as you want, a confused mouth set, a um, you know, screaming mouth set, whatever you want, and you can trigger these on demand. You also notice some of these mouths are not just single uh, layers, they actually have a couple of things in them, like the ah mouth, and that's because this is actually a two frame animated sequence um, that plays when the ah happens, just to add a little bit of extra fluidity. You have to do an extra step in character animator, add this behavior called cycle layers. Don't worry about that right now. Uh, just know that that's why some of these mouths are in those groups. Okay, so I'm personally not gonna do any customization for these mouths. I think they look fine. So I'm gonna twirl that closed and I'm gonna move on into the eyebrows. All right, so let's just twirl open the right eyebrow here and I see a layer called replace. And if I use my selection tool over here and just kind of drag around, I should see that I'm dragging that eyebrow around. Now you might have this thing auto select checked. If that happens, it's gonna be whatever you click is what you're going to move around. Um, so if I click the head, then that's what I'm gonna be moving around. I don't wanna do that. Uh, normally for character animator, I don't have that checked. I have auto select unchecked, and then I just will find the asset I want. I'll either select it over uh, here or I'll right click it 
and find uh, you know the exact layer that I want. Um, I feel like that just gives me a little more precision and I'm not accidentally clicking things that I don't want to. But you know, do whatever feels natural and comfortable to you. So for this character, I think I want him to have slightly uh, thicker eyebrows. So what I'm gonna do is go down here and with replace selected, go down here and select the new uh, layer icon, the one that's right next to the trash can. And that's gonna make a new layer that's directly above my replace layer. Once that's done, I can just uh, select this and press delete to delete my replace layer because I don't need it anymore. Um, and that's gonna give me a blank layer that's inside my eyebrow uh, group. So anything I draw on here is gonna start moving with my right eyebrow. So I'm just gonna make some really simple, thick uh, rectangle um, looking uh, eyebrows. So I'm gonna go over here to my rectangle tool. Um, by default, that should show up. If you're in a different workspace, you might have to click on one of these and hold to see, uh, you know, see some different options, some different shapes. But for me, the rectangle is right here and that looks good. Up here, I'm gonna make sure this is selected, uh, set to shape, because I do wanna create a shape. And I'm gonna change the fill color. I think I want it to be black actually, so I'm just gonna do that. I could add a stroke if I wanted to around it um, with any width that I want. Stroke is just like the outline that you're seeing here. So this uh, head, for example, has a black stroke that's around it. But for this, the eyebrows, I just wanna keep it basic black. I think that's okay. And then I'm gonna go over top of the scene with my layer selected, and I'm just gonna click and drag kind of over here and make a thick rectangle. And now this new layer rectangle is showing up. I'm just gonna get rid of this properties right now. I don't need it. And that is my new eyebrow artwork. Now, probably you're gonna want your eyebrows to look the same. So let's do the exact same thing for the left eyebrow. Um, actually, what I'm going to do is select rectangle one. And on the Mac, I'm gonna press uh, Command and J. And that's gonna create a copy. I believe that's Control J on PC. And then I can just drag this into my left eyebrow group. And then I will go to my move tool over here and then press right arrow and it's gonna move it over. If I hold down shift and the right arrow and click uh, the right arrow a few times, that's going to move it a little bit faster. And that way I can know that they're exactly lined up. They're gonna look great. So again, I don't need this replace layer uh, showing up below. I'm gonna delete that. And there we go. I've just made a really simple change, but let's go ahead and go back to Character Animator and see how this change is reflected. So I definitely wanna save this. Uh, your changes will not show up unless you save. So I will go to File and Save. So now back in Character Animator, I should see that my artwork has synced. You'll see this few dialogue saying updating, importing, all of that. And then you should notice that as I move my eyebrows, my new eyebrow artwork is moving up and down as I would expect. Now you do have some control over how much these eyebrows are moving and that's gonna take us back to this behavior section. So remember when we were moving around the character with the transform behavior, now we're gonna worry about the face. The eyebrows are part of the face. So if I go down here, if I twirl to open face and go down here to, um, what is it, eyebrow strength, that's currently set to 75. If I turn this way up, now my eyebrows are gonna move a lot more and that looks absolutely terrible. So let's click the X to move that back. But maybe tweaking it a little bit might look better. A lot of this is gonna depend on the shape of your eyes and your eyebrows and your character, how expressive you want it to be. So you wanna play around with these parameters and do what's best for your puppet. These default set, this default set is not gonna work uh, you know, for every single puppet. You're gonna to wanna to customize these. Same thing down here with raised eyebrow tilt and lowered eyes, uh, eyebrow tilt. So when I move my eyebrows up, I feel like my character's eye, eyebrows aren't you know, looking as worried as I want them to. So I can actually move this, drag, click and drag over this and make him, when I do an up position, his eyebrows move up a little bit more. Um, that is too much, so let's bring that down. Um, but again, you can customize this, do whatever you want to make it work exactly like you want. If I want his eyebrows to be lowered a little bit more, I can move in the negative direction and have some control there. Okay, so that's good. And remember we were talking about the mouth too, and I should see that my uh, mouth is showing up here. I'm looking pretty happy, but if I press the five key, look what happens. Now he's showing that sad mouth set. So I just pressed five on the, uh, on the keyboard, and that is what we call a trigger. So I press five, and now he's looking kind of sad. He's looking a little bit more angry or sad, and then I press five again, and it's gonna go back to my happy set. So we'll dig into triggers in a little bit, but the basic idea is you can have multiple sets of things and press a key to have those things appear or disappear uh, on demand. All right, so eyebrows are looking pretty good. I'm going to twirl those back up and let's start focusing on the eyes. 
So I see that my eye has four different parts, um, a blink state. Uh, so this is something, if I turn the visibility on, this is something, whatever is called left blink is what's gonna show up when I blink in the webcam. I have a lid. This is an optional thing that I've added just to add a little bit of extra um, emotion to my character. I have a trigger that will make the lid open and close. So I like having a lid, but this is totally optional. If you wanna just delete this or make it invisible, um, that's totally fine as well. Left pupil, this is going to be the actual little pupil that's going to move around. I have that centered currently. And then eyeball is going to be the shape of the eye, um, the main circle that the pupil is gonna kind of stay inside. All right, so let's go ahead and customize some of this. And first off, uh, I think one of the things I'm gonna do is change this character's skin color. Um, so let's say uh, I want, I'm gonna turn the left blink on and I kind of like the look of this blink state, but instead I wanna make it a different color. So let's double click in the blink space next to replace over here. And that's gonna bring up again, my layer style that I showed earlier. And I'm gonna go to color overlay and uh, let's pick a color that we think is good. So I'm okay with this. Uh, usually I would use something like overlay, um, but maybe hue and a blue color. That looks pretty good. That's gonna keep the black um, here outline as well. So. I'm just gonna do something like that and click OK. And now you'll see this color overlay effect shows up and has been added to my, uh, my eye state, this blink state. And the nice thing is this is something that I can continue to copy and reference in multiple parts of the character. So if I right click here and then go to uh, copy layer style, that now has saved, copied that blue overlay over top of everything else. So if I turn this blink off, and now go to my lid layer down here and right click and go to paste layer style, guess what's gonna happen? The exact same format is going to happen, uh, the exact same styling is going to be applied to that lid. So while we're at it, I'm just gonna go ahead and do the same thing to the background or down here. So face background has a bunch of different parts. It has this little shading I don't care about, but it does have this main face background. I wanna make that blue. So let's go to paste layer style that's gonna make that blue. And then the ears as well, right click, paste layer style, and right click, paste layer style. So I'm probably just gonna copy what I'm doing with the left eye and do the right eye. So I'm actually gonna just select my right eye group and delete it for now. Um, and then later I can just rename everything right, you know, right eye, right blink, all of that for my different version. But it doesn't make sense to make, you know, two of the exact same thing. And you want your eyes to kind of be the exact same setup so they move in unison. Um, I've seen before where people have two different eye shapes and it can lead to some, some weird issues. All right, so we did the blink state, that looks pretty good. Um, the lid looks okay, I'm all right with that. Let's make a completely different sized pupil. So with replace selected again, I'm gonna go down to my new layer, click on that, uh, I can delete replace, and now I've got a blank layer inside my pupil. I'm gonna go over to my uh, ellipse tool over here, circle uh, shape, and do the exact same thing like I was doing with the eyebrows. So I'm gonna check out my fill and my stroke shape, all of that looks good to me, and I do think I want his pupil color to be black, so I'm all right with that. And I'm just going to click in this area, make sure layer one or whatever is inside my pupil group is selected and just click and drag until I get a pupil that I like. So I kind of want a bigger pupil for this character. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then I'm gonna use the move tool um, up here to move it into place right about where I want it. Now, normally I would say for your first character, keep your eyes kind of right here in the middle. Um, and that's gonna give you the most uh, movement and, and look the best. You can make your eyes kind of off-centered. Sometimes cartoons will do this where they bring the eye in a little bit more, and that's fine, but it can lead to some issues of the eye not knowing how to move diagonally. There's some special tricks you have to do with that. We've got some eye tutorials out there. So if that is something you wanna do, I would say go ahead and do it and then watch those eye tutorials um, to teach you about the rigging setup there. And then my eyeball. I could do the exact same thing and make my eyeball you know, a completely different shape. I could delete this. Uh, don't do this right now, I'm just showing you as an example. Um, make the fill white and the stroke maybe something like, I don't know, 15, I don't know. And then click and drag and now I have a new sized eyeball and I can make that you know, any size I want, more narrow, uh, anything like that. You know, for me though, uh, I liked the shape of this eye, these eyes and the lid and the blink state are already kind of working with this eye shape. So for the purposes of our first custom character, I think I'm gonna keep things the exact same size and I think that's gonna be okay. All right, so now that I'm pretty happy with how my eye is looking, 
I'm going to uh, just duplicate this and basically uh, move it over and change all the left instances to right. So I'm going to select my main left eye group up here and I'm going to press Command J on Mac. That's Control J on uh, Windows. And then again, with my movement tools selected over here, I'll press Shift and left arrow to move it over into exactly the right position that I want. That looks pretty good. And now we're just going to change everything from left eye to right eye. So I'll do that. I'll get rid of the copy here and just make sure everything is named the exact right way. So change blink to right blink and pupil to right pupil. OK. All right. So I think this should work. Let's go ahead and go to File, Save, and uh, see if that is going to work in Character Animator. All right. So at first glance, this looks OK. But as I move my pupils, notice some weirdness is happening. The head is kind of uh, collapsing on itself. There's some weird stuff going on. And uh, it's because uh, I kind of made that new right pupil uh, from scratch. And so it's not what we call independent. Let's go into rig mode and I'll show you what I mean by independence. So again, we go to rig mode either by clicking on rig up here or I can double click my puppet uh, over here in the project panel to go over. So here in rig mode, you'll see there is a column here with a bunch of crowns. If something has a crown next to it, it means it's independent. What does independent mean? It means it can move on its own without affecting or pulling or warping any other artwork. So remember when we named in character uh, Photoshop, this was called plus blank. Well, when you put a plus in front of a layer name in Photoshop or Illustrator, it's kind of a secret code for Character Animator to automatically add the crown icon when it's imported in. So I see a lot of things that are like that, that have been either added uh, in the original Photoshop file or I added them later in this file. But remember, we made our right eye from scratch. And so this does not have any pluses and I'm not seeing any independence down here. Now, the problem is the left pupil that does have independence and we do want that to move on its own. The right pupil does not. So all I have to do is click in the blink area over here next to right pupil. And now if I go back to record mode, hopefully everything is working as I would expect. So now when the pupils are moving, they're moving together and they are not pulling and warping on the rest of things. So anytime you see something like that, an effect where something feels like a part or a movement, your head or whatever is pulling on something that it shouldn't, it's probably an issue of independence. It's really easy to experiment with these sort of things. Try putting independence on and off. So like the eyebrows here, if I took independence off of the eyebrows and had them not independent, not moving on their own, look what's going to happen. The eyebrows are going to move and pull on the rest of the artwork. And that is not what we want to have happen, right? So that is why we always make the eyebrows independent. So let's go back to rig mode and turn those back on and that will make things better. While I'm here, I'm also going to make the right eye independent, the group, um, just because the eye movement, uh, you can use some parallax and a few other things that would, uh, would benefit from this being uh, independent. So let's just do that for now. All right, so back to Photoshop. Let's change the nose. Uh, he has this little upside down U as his nose, but I'm going to make it more of a, um, a shape. So what I'm going to do again is when I select replace, click the new layer uh, icon down here, which will make a new layer above replace. I can delete that replace layer. And now I've got a blank layer inside the nose that I can use to create my nose. So a tool I use a lot, both in Photoshop and Illustrator, is the pen tool, this one right here. Uh, if you've never used the pen tool before, it's basically something that allows you to click, drag, make a bunch of different you know, positions, and create really specific, unique shapes uh, for your character. So I'm just going to delete all that stuff because that looks terrible. Um, it's something that can take a while to master. So if you if this is your first time using the pen tool, um, I'm sorry, uh, it can be a little bit difficult, but hopefully it will get better uh, in the future. So we're going to kind of walk through just a basic pen tool nose. So I think I want his uh, fill color here to be I want to make sure this is again set to shape and I want the fill to be a slightly darker blue than this. So I'm going to click on this little swatch icon over here. And when you do that, you get this little color picker if you go over top of your character. So I'm just going to click like the blue here to say this is the exact blue that I want. If I wanted black or white or whatever, I can click on those with the eyedropper. But I just want this light blue. And I'm just going to go a little bit darker than that original blue just to make the nose stand out as a little bit different and not make everything the same color. 
So that looks good. I'll click OK to that. Um, the stroke, I think I probably want a stroke since everything else on this character is strokes. So let's make a stroke of maybe seven or something like that. Let's try that and see how that looks. Okay, so I've got layer one selected over here. I'm gonna click, I'm just gonna make a simple like triangle type nose, something like that. And then click uh, on the original point that you started to kind of close the loop. And now I've got his nose shape. I'll go to my move tool over uh, up here and then move that and reposition it until it's exactly where I want it. So, all right, we've got a new nose. I don't have to go to back to character animator and make sure the nose is working. I think, I think we're gonna be okay. All right, but now I'm gonna start to add some additional details to my character. And where I'm gonna start with that is down here in this face background group. So right now, as we saw before, we've got the shading, the, um, the background, the uh, ears and all of that. I could delete all of this and just make my own new shape inside here, right? So I could just do this. I don't do this right now. I'm just showing you as an example and make a completely different colored face and uh, you know, say, this is what I want for this character. This looks horrible, so obviously, why would anyone in the right mind do that? Um, probably a bad idea. So I'm gonna actually start with this as a basis. I like the basic shape of this. Um, maybe I might you know, tweak things a little bit. You can always um, select, like if I selected face background here and then pressed Command T on Mac, or that's Control T on Windows, um, I'm going to get these free transform tools here, and then I can just drag and make things bigger or smaller or rotate. And those will change depending on if I hit down option or shift. Um, I can kind of manipulate this shape to be a little bit thinner or thicker or whatever I want. So you do have that as an option if you kind of want to change how this is looking. For me, again, I'm okay with this kind of bigger face look, um, but you, know, you can do whatever you want. Now I want my character to have a, a little bit of hair. So what I'm gonna do is inside my face background group, let's just select the shading layer down here, the first one called replace, and click the new layer icon as usual to make a new layer, and go ahead and make sure you have the pin tool selected again. And let's go ahead and make his uh, hair orange. So we're gonna do some orange hair. I am gonna give it a stroke. That looks pretty good. And then I'm just gonna start with kind of a basic, uh, you know, hairstyle. So maybe I click here, have some sideburns, uh, when you click and drag, it does this little curve. Um, and so I'm gonna do something like that. And then I'm going to hold down Option on Mac or Alt on PC to drag this little handle to make it move up a little bit. Again, there's plenty of pin tutorials out there. Um, so if you are, uh, this is your first time using the pin tool, uh, this might not be the best place to start. You might be better off uh, if you're really interested in this stuff learning from uh, someone who actually knows what they're talking about, but uh, I'm just going through this really quick to kind of show you what you can do. So I'll drag something like that and this, and we'll connect it back at the end here and have the hair kind of bump up, something like that. Okay, so now we've got a basic hair layer, and this is a completely you know new custom layer that I've added. It doesn't matter that it's not a eye or whatever, I could add, you know, glasses to this character if I wanted, right? So if I made a new layer and just started, you know, let's just use the uh, brush tool here and just start to paint, you know, some glasses and do something like this and move it over top of the eyes so it's gonna show up above them, you could do that um, and that's totally fine. So feel free to add details to your character um, as you want. Don't feel like you're restricted to adjust these layers that are over here. You can add your own stuff anywhere you want and that's totally fine. Just make sure it's inside the head group um, so it's gonna all move together with your own head movements. Now one special thing I wanna do is add some kind of physics to this character. So I want his hair to sway a little bit um, as it moves. So I'm gonna give him a few spikes on the top of his hair. And the way I'm gonna do that is with my layer selected here, click a new layer, go back to my pen tool, make sure it's the exact same setup as I, I just had. And I'm just gonna do something like this where I click, 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 and that's gonna add this little spike right here. And uh, I think I'm gonna make one more as well. Um, so I'm gonna click this, this uh, new layer down here and do the exact same thing directly underneath it, something like click, click, click. So now he's got these two spikes. I'm gonna move them, just make them kind of line up as best I can. Now let's use that knowledge of independence to, fig to uh, make these independent because we do want, uh, when you add physics to something, you do want them to be independent. So I'm gonna go ahead and double click on the name here and just call it plus hair. 
and do the same thing for my other uh, one, plus hair. I don't have to worry about the base layer. I can call that whatever I want, um, but plus hair for the two parts, the particles that I want to move around. Uh, in the Illustrator tutorial, I showed how to do this with longer uh, female uh, hair. So if you're interested in doing that sort of hairstyle, I would recommend checking out the Illustrator part of this, um, uh, the other video that, that goes into this. Um, but for now, we're just gonna keep with some pretty simple spiky hair for this guy. All right, so we are good to go. Let's save and go to Character Animator. All right, so my character is showing up uh, with all the changes synced. Um, if for some weird reason you come and your changes aren't linked, you can always select your puppet over here and click on, make sure auto sync with artwork is checked. And then if you click on this, that's gonna allow you to replace the file with whatever file you do want linked. So if things ever do get unlinked and you're not seeing your changes, it's probably one of these two, uh, that's the problem. All right, so he's looking good, but the hair is not moving, and I do need to do a few manual steps to add some physics to this character. So let's double click on um, my puppet over here to go back to rig mode, and let's find those layers that were called hair. Those were in the face background group, um, and Charlie's other ones open, and I see I've got hair uh, and hair two uh, showing up over here. To move around in character animator, I can use the pan tool down here, this little hand, that's gonna let me click and drag. You can also hold down the space bar to do the exact same thing. And the zoom tool uh, will let me zoom in uh, as well to see things a little bit clearer. All right, so if I select my hair layers, I notice that there's a few things going on. There's a yellow outline that shows where they are, you know, what kind of the, the contours of the artwork are. There's a blue rectangle that shows what, uh, you know, what the, the bound, bounding box, if you put an invisible rectangle around it, what that would look like. And then you have this green dotted line that is showing what the hair is being attached to. And this circle right here is the origin handle. That means where things are going to rotate from. I don't want my zoom tool. I'm gonna go back to my arrow tool uh, down here. And if I click and drag on this, you'll notice I can change where the origin, where the rotation point is. And what I want to do with hair is you probably want it to be rotating and attached to your, you know, your skull, right? To, to the base of the head, the roots. So I'm gonna drag down here and when it finds something to attach to, it's gonna make that attach point green. So in this case, it's the, uh, you know, the rest of the head. So I drag down here until it turns green and let go. And now this, uh, this hair piece is attached to the rest of the head. So let's do the exact same thing with the other one drag the hair down here, this origin handle, so it is connected to the, the root of where it would be connected to the head. Now to give it the actual physics information it needs, I'm gonna go down here to the dangle tool, this little pendulum looking thing, click on that and just click and make a new little dangle handle right there. Um, and that's going to be, you can think of that as like an invisible metal ball that is pulling down on the hair and saying where gravity is affecting it. This is a shortcut to do this, but you could also do the exact same thing by clicking on this little thing called the handle tool down here. So let's do this for the other hair, actually. I'm going to click the handle tool. I'm gonna to click on the extreme edge where I would want, where I would want that um, dangle to happen. And then over here in my tags panel, I'm gonna click on dangle, and that's doing the exact same thing. So two different ways to do, uh, to add dangle and physics to your character. So now, if I go back to my character, I should see that his hair is moving. Now, this one is moving a little bit more than the other one because it's a little bit of a longer uh, strand, but I have some options down here um, under physics. So let's twirl up face, let's twirl down physics, and if I twirl open the dangle area and change stiffness, let's see what happens if I bring this all the way down. Well, now he's got really droopy hair, um, and that's kind of cool. Maybe, you know, I might want a character to look like that, but for me, I probably want it to be a little stiffer. So let's do something like uh, this. It was around 100 and that looks okay to me. Um, something like that has the right amount of stiffness. So you can play around with, you know, in rig mode where the handles are, like change the root to be in a different place or change the dangle position, um, you know, do things like that. And that can have a pretty dramatic effect on uh, how things move. But if I do something like this, I think this is gonna look pretty good. The hair's gonna kind of feel like it's it's got a little bit of bounce to it. I love adding things like this to my characters, whether it's earrings or a necklace or hoodie strings or something like that. Something that adds a little bit of extra uh, secondary animation to a character. And once you set it up, you don't have to worry about it again. You just talk and move and your character is going to move and adds a little bit of extra uh, life to them, right? So um, if you can find instances, the hair is an obvious choice, but if you can find other instances to add this sort of stuff to your character, um, I say go for it. 
All right, so I'm pretty happy with how the head is looking. Again, you could add as many different things, a hat, glasses, goatee, mustache, whatever you want to your character um, here and just put them in here. But for me, I'm liking how it's looking, so I'm gonna stop, stop uh, there. Before I move on to the next step, I'm gonna wanna make sure that I have copied this color overlay or whatever I've done um, so I can apply that to the neck and the arms and the hands. So again, I will select the, uh, make sure I select the face background, uh, this replace layer in here. I will right click it and go to copy layer style just to make sure I have that copied. With that, I can twirl up the head and twirl open the body. And I see in the body, I've got some arms, uh, the torso and pants. Okay, so let's go into the torso first. Um, one of these, I think the top layer is the neck. So I will right click that, paste layer style to make that blue. And then in the arms, I'm gonna do the same thing for uh, the uh, arms here. Right click, paste layer style. And in the left arm, inside the arm, looks like this one, right, paste layer style. And now I've got that. Now the hands, are actually in a group. And uh, with the hands, you see I have different hand positions. So I have a default hand, a flipped hand, where the thumb is facing the other way, and a point gesture. So a lot of times in cartoons, right, people don't just have their hands in one position. They're going to sometimes point at things or give a thumbs up or you know be pushing against something. Uh, and so this is gonna show us triggers and different hand positions. So what I have to end up doing for each of these is um, I'm gonna have to add the uh, layer style to each of them to make sure they're all the same color. I can do that by holding down Command on Mac or Control on PC and right click, uh, you know, select multiple ones and paste the layer style so they all get the exact same style. Um, let's do the same thing for the hand down here. I'm gonna twirl it open, select replace, 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 right click and do paste layer style and that should make all of these be the exact same color. All right, so let's move from the top to the bottom. We'll start with the right arm here. Um, and by the way, when we say right and left, I should have said this earlier, we don't mean the right and left side of the uh, the screen. We're talking about the right and left side of the character. So even though this says right arm uh, and it's on the left side of the screen, if this character was facing me, this would be his right side. It can be a little confusing, but um, pretty easy to fix. And honestly, it doesn't matter that much. Okay, so in here, I've got my sleeve, I've got my arm, and then I have this group of the different hands, the default, the flip, and the point. Let's go ahead and actually add a extra hand. Um, I'm gonna wanna do, uh, let's just say a, uh, a thumbs up or a peace sign or maybe a fist, I don't know, something like that. So with my right hand group selected, I'm gonna click the new layer icon. Uh, that's going to create a new layer right here. Let's zoom in and move over and let's get rid, actually for the default hand, let's just bring that opacity down to something like I don't know, 46% or something like that. So we can use this as a guide for our sizing. So we're not making one hand way bigger than the other hands, right? We kind of want all our hands to be the exact, you know, general size. All right, so with my new layer selected, I'm gonna go to the pen tool. I'm gonna make sure it's shape. I want the color not to be the orange that I had for the hair, but instead I'm gonna click on the arm to make sure that's the right color. Um, and I do want the stroke to be, I think seven is about the right one. So to do something like a thumbs up, maybe I would click and do something like this, and then a thumb coming out like this, and then maybe have it curve back down, and then come back around and connect uh, like that, and maybe do something like this and this. Okay, so that's a basic thumb. Um, I might move it around, make it look a little bit bigger, and then I would want to add, um, the finger is kind of wrapping over top. So I'm gonna make a new layer here, go back to my ellipse tool, and just kind of drag over top to show a finger coming around the top. Um, this is totally optional, by the way. I'm just showing how you would make different hand positions because a lot of times people do want um, additional positions. And so this is just a, showing you what you can do with this sort of thing. So I'm gonna press Command J, make a duplicate copy, something like this, and like, that. Not the best thumb in the world, but you know what? I think it's going to do for today. That looks okay to me. So I probably don't want these to be four separate, uh, you know, layers. I'm going to put them in a group. I'm just going to select them, make a group, um, and let's recall call this uh, thumbs up. 
And again, I just you know double clicked on the name here uh, to get the rename and typed in what I wanted and pressed enter. And before I go back, I'm gonna make sure default is set back to um, the correct opacity. All right, so let's save that. And now we will go back into Character Animator and learn how to trigger our thumbs up. So this character actually already has some triggers set up. Remember when we pressed five earlier, we did the sad mouth set. Um, and if I press five again, he goes back to happy. Well, if I press one, he's gonna flip his armor, his hand around over here. Uh, two is gonna do a point. Three is gonna do it on the other hand. Three and four will do the flip and the point on the other hand. Uh, five we just showed. Six apparently is only triggering one of the eyelids, so I'm gonna have to fix that in a second. And seven is only gonna trigger one of the blinks. So I've got a lot of triggers work here to do. So let's go back into uh, rig mode and fix this stuff. All right, so this panel down here is your triggers panel. If you're seeing history instead, just go over to triggers and you'll be able to see everything. So all the trigger is, is saying when to show or hide something at any given time. So as a really dumb example, if I wanted my whole head to disappear, I could drag my head into here. I can either drag it into the blank space or over top of create trigger. That's gonna create this new trigger called head. Uh, let's set that to the nine key. And uh, let's go ahead back to record mode. Now by default, I'm not gonna have a head. And that's because I've triggered it. I've said, I only want this artwork or this sequence or whatever to show up when I press a key. In this case, when I press nine. And then when I let go of nine, it's going to go away. Now, there's a way we call, there's this thing we call latching. So if I select this and click latch down here, that's gonna let me just click things one time. So now when I press nine and let go of the key, I don't have to continually press it down. It's more like a light switch. It's gonna turn on and off. And I press nine again and it turns off again. So you have some different options there. Um, this is a bad example. I probably don't want a headless character. So I'm gonna go back to rig mode and I'm going to select and delete my head trigger. And now the head should show up by default as I would normally want. Now there's these groupings with these little three dots here. Um, and these are what we call swap sets. And you can create your own swap set just by clicking the plus here, create swap set, and then you can drag any triggers you want inside the swap set. The only difference between triggers and a swap set is that a swap set, only one trigger is gonna show up at a time inside that set. And this makes sense, right? With your hands, you don't want default flip and point to all be showing at the, up at the same time, right? You wanna be able to say, I only wanna see one of these at any given time. And in this case, default uh, is the one that I want uh, selected currently. That's the one I, always, I want when the character first loads up. This is the first one I want to see. Now, if I tap and clicked on these other little uh, fingers, I can make those the default, or you can click default down here next to latch. But in this case, I wanted this default to show up. And you'll see down here in layers and replays, it'll say the exact layer uh, that, is being, um, that is being connected here. So if I click on this, it's actually gonna open up the exact thing that has a trigger on it. In any layer artwork with a trigger, you're gonna see a little uh, icon with the finger next to it here. So I can see that my mouths up here are triggered or my you know different hand states down here are triggered. And by that same token, if I click on one of these icons down here, I'm going to see the subsequent trigger that shows up down here as well. Now I can change my triggers to whatever I want. So even though one was here, I could set this to H instead and now H is gonna be the thing that flips um, this around. So you can change you know, whatever letter or number alphanumeric uh, key you want for this, this sort of thing. Now in this case, I have a new trigger, right? I've got this thumbs up that I created that I also want to be part of the swap set. So very simply, all I have to do is click and drag my new uh, hand position over top of right hand, and now I have a new thumbs up trigger that's part of this swap set. So let's make this the eight key. I don't believe eight is used yet. So let's add eight. And I probably wanna latch this just like the others. And that looks pretty good. Now, while I'm at it, let's fix the issue with our lid triggers and the blinks that were happening. So if I select the lid here, I'll see that right now it's only triggering the left eye and the lid because remember we copied our left eye and then made the right eye from scratch. And because of that, the right eye that used to be part of this trigger is gone. We deleted it. So we're gonna add that back in. And the way we're gonna do that is look in our right eye over here, find the lid, and I'm just gonna drag this trigger over top of the existing trigger, the lid trigger. So yeah, you can have two layers, you can have as many layers as you want actually attached to 
um, a single uh, trigger. And actually, let's just, I command, uh, con command Z that just to show another way to do this. If I dragged the lid in down here, I could drag one trigger over top of another trigger and that's gonna combine them as well. Now, the same thing was true of Blink, right? We, we did the same thing where Blink was missing. So I'm gonna go up here to right Blink, drag Blink, the right Blink over top of this other Blink, and I can see that these two are now being um, together. Now, I've also got this state called Open, and that's just a Blink trigger. That doesn't have anything in it, and that's okay. Sometimes you do want Blink triggers, like in this case, uh, when I do the, the six key, let's go back to record mode and see what that looks like. When I press six, it's gonna get rid of those lids and have my character have a wide-eyed look. And so that's a nice way to add some, you know, he's surprised or he's, you know, whatever. So yeah, you can add blink triggers too, and that's gonna work just as well. But let's check the things that we just added, right? So I think I did eight for the thumbs up. So yeah, now he's got a thumbs up, that looks okay. And he's doing, you know, he's hitchhiking or he's doing something like that. Um, I don't know what he's doing, but that, that looks all right. So we'll turn that off. I'm noticing that six is making my lids go up and down and seven is making my blinks open and close. So overall, that's looking um, pretty good, like I would expect. So play around and have fun with triggers, right? We were talking about adding extra accessories to a character like glasses or a mustache. You can make those triggers. You can make glasses that appear when you press the G key or you know a goatee that appears or a mustache that appears or um, a hat whatever you want accessory wise, um, you can have these things appear or disappear, even things in their hands. So maybe he's holding you know, a can of soda or um, uh, you know, a sword or whatever you want. You can add those into the different hand positions um, and just trigger those and you can have your character doing and interacting with a wide variety of things. So back to Photoshop, the last thing I think I want to do is cu customize some of his clothing, right? So I feel like this, this gray is not working. I don't want the character animator logo there. Um, so I'm gonna add a few different things. So let's go, I'm gonna right click this and I'm just gonna do the same techniques I've been doing before where I you know, say I want a different color overlay for the torso. Um, let's do something like maybe, a, uh, maybe an orangish color similar to the hair. Uh, hue is not gonna show up as a default. I'm gonna go to color. I think that's gonna look a little bit better. That looks okay. And then we will copy this layer style and do the same thing we were doing with the, the skin to get uh, the different sleeves the right color as well. So I'll right click, paste layer style, go to my other arm, right click, paste layer style, and now we've got a different colored shirt. And then of course I can add whatever you know patterns I want over top of it. Um, take as long as you want on this sort of step, add a logo, add whatever you want. In this case, I think I'm just going to make a new layer and uh, add some you know, basic stripes to the character. So something like this, one set of stripes and another set of stripes, something like that, that just gives it a little bit of more visual interest than a flat color. And then I will select these and maybe bring the opacity down a little bit so it blends in with the shirt a little bit more. And that looks okay. I think I am gonna make the shoes uh, the same color that I, I had before, paste layer style make those orange as well. Um, of course, I could add laces or a logo or whatever I want on them. And then the pants down here, um, let's change that to a different color as well. Uh, color overlay, maybe a multiply, just make them a little darker. That looks good, something like that. Um, you could of course take this, again, you can manipulate any of this stuff. You could take this out and just make your own pants in this layer, um, do whatever you want, uh, add pockets, add a belt, um, you know, totally up to you how you go about this sort of thing. So at this point, we are pretty much done, but I did wanna point out some additional rigging things that are happening in this character in case you start messing around with the artwork and you see that things aren't working right. For example, the jaw movement or the feet aren't sticking to the ground or your arms are slightly longer or shorter and suddenly they're not bending the correct way. Um, so we're gonna go into a few of those things in rig mode just so you understand them and they can help with troubleshooting in case you, uh, you know, your puppet is messing up in some way. The first thing I wanted to point out is if you select the body, you'll notice there's uh, a couple of things down here, these yellow lines that have the tag fixed on them. So if I remove these, let's just delete these and see what happens if these were not here. Go back to record mode, and now the feet are not stuck on the ground. By default, you bring a character in, the head is doing all the movement, but it doesn't know that the feet need to stay on the ground. So this is a really simple rigging thing that you can do. There's a couple of ways to do this. 
One way is to just use the fixed uh, pin tool down here, this little thumbtack looking thing. Click that, make sure your body group is selected. Don't do the legs or any of the layers inside. The whole body group is what you want to be pinned down. And then you can just click and do a few dots and that's gonna make a few fixed pins. Basically this is like nailing down uh, the feet to the ground. Another way is to use this thing called a stick. That's this little bracket tool looking thing over here. And if I use that and just click and drag, I'm gonna get a long uh, stretch. It's basically like a bone. It's essentially putting a bone in the character. And then I can tag that over here as fixed. So that's two ways of essentially doing the same thing. But if I go back to record mode now, I should see that the feet are now pinned to the ground and the character is moving as expected. The second thing I wanted to focus on is the head. Um, first, you'll notice the head, its origin handle has been moved down to where the neck is. That's because our heads normally rotate from the neck. They don't rotate from the middle like the nose. So that's just a small thing. Um, when you see things aren't rotating the right way, moving their origin handle can definitely help a lot. The second thing is if I dig in here, there the group face background, you notice this has a stick on it that has been tagged as jaw. So the same process of making a stick using the stick tool but you'll notice over here in the picture, and you can of course move between um, you know, text or visual tags if you want to by this little toggle up here, but it's been tagged as a jaw. And you can see this in uh, the lip sync behavior. So if I twirl open the lip sync behavior, I see this parameter called jaw movement. That is looking for the jaw, uh, the jaw tag and deciding how much to move it. Now I've set this to 25%. If I move this up to 100, you're gonna see a much more dramatic effect of the jaw moving. And it looks like this guy has a serious issue that he needs to get taken care of. So let's move that back down to 25 and that looks a little more subtle and better. So that face background group, whatever you've changed that to or added it to, you may want to move around the jaw or make the stick smaller or something like that, depending on your character shape and size. The next small thing is that, remember when we were talking about the mouths, I said there are some mouths that have a couple of shapes associated with them. And to get these to work, you have to add a behavior and you can add a shortcut to add a behavior. It's just this column right here, this little brick icon thing here. I click here and I can add a behavior. And in this case, the cycle layers behavior has been added to some of these mouths. If it has an icon, it means the behavior has been added. And you can see the behavior over here on the right hand side. So what does this mean? Well, it just means that it's gonna play through this sequence based on the rules down here. So it's only gonna show up when triggered, move from the top to the bottom, go at one frame, uh, you know, advance every one frame, depending on your frame rate, that's gonna go fast and slow. Uh, go only once and hold on the last layer. So if you're holding an ah or something like that, it should ideally hold instead of, you know, going back to a neutral mouth. Um, on trigger in, stop immediately in case you go to another sound. You don't want to be holding on an old sound. So just some rules down here, but cycle layers are used a lot to kind of add frame by frame animation into your live performance capture character. So simple example, this is both happening in the main mouth and the sad mouth for several of these. So in case you, you know, lose that rigging somehow or you change your mouths and want to do this sort of thing, that is how you would add, um, just add a cycle layers behavior to do that frame by frame sequencing. And finally, the most complicated part is probably the arms. If you select an arm, you see a lot going on here. So what I'm going to do is just delete a bunch of this stuff and show you how I did it from scratch here. So when you first bring in an arm, it's going to look something like this, right? The origin is going to be in the middle and uh, it's not going to work as expected. So the first thing you're going to want to do is, well, number one, you wanna make sure your arm is independent. It wants to move on its own. You don't want it pulling the rest of the body, right? And then you want to move the origin over so it connects to the body. Normally I you know, will overlap my arms a little bit with the body, whether they're in the front or the back. And layer placement is important, right? So my arms are gonna show up in front of the body so the layers are in front of the torso and the pants. So if you wanted them to show up behind, you would just move them behind the torso and pants instead. But in this case, I want it to attach a little bit to the body. And then what I'm gonna do is uh, go down to this tool, the dragger tool, this little compass looking thing, click that and put a dragger on the hand right there. All on the right arm group with the same arm group selected, that's it. So if I go back to record mode now, um, I should be able to drag this hand and it looks okay. It's got a little bit of floppiness though I'm noticing and I can stretch it pretty far as well. Um, so it can get into some weird situations there. So there's some additional rigging I can do as well. 
the first thing I can do is remember those sticks that we had earlier. I can just add some bones really quickly by dragging there for the forearm, leave a little room and drag for the bicep. That's a very small, simple fix, but immediately that's gonna give me some bone structure there. And that already looks way better um, than my rubbery spaghetti arms that I had before. Now, the problem is I still have the stretchiness and a few other things. And that's where a new behavior, um, a relatively new behavior, it's been around for about a year, um, called arm IK fits in. So you'll notice if I select my puppet up here, this, this main thing up here, this is where all my main behaviors are added to the character. And I would say, all of these, uh, all these that I'm seeing here are things that are automatically added to your character. You don't need to go in and add each behavior manually. These are things that we think uh, you'll want. The exception is arm IK. This is one that I did have to add manually. So I just again went to plus, uh, where is it? Arm IK right at the top, of course. And that adds the arm IK behavior. Now the issue with arm IK is it's gonna look for specific parts, tagged parts, to understand how the elbow bends. And right now we don't really have that. We only have this arm, but we don't have a lot of information. So I'm gonna do two things. I'm gonna select the draggable uh, handle here, and I'm also gonna tag it as a wrist using this picture over here. And you see it gets tagged as a right wrist. I'm gonna do the same thing for the elbow and uh, do it here as the right elbow. And then I could tag the shoulder as right shoulder. Um, I already for this character had the body actually selected as the right shoulder. And this is, um, if you're doing walk animations currently, you need the shoulders on the body and not the arm. But honestly, for this character, either is going to work. Um, but for now, I'm just gonna keep it like this. And normally, you, where you want that handle to be is right on where the origin is. And you can see this little green dot where the arm is connected to the body. And so that's a pretty good spot. Okay, so with just those three tags, the shoulder, the elbow, and the wrist, now I'm getting better elbow bend, right? So I can tell, it. I can't stretch it, number one. It's not gonna stretch beyond um, you know, a certain threshold. And then the elbow is bending a lot better um, and according to you know, smarter rules. And I have some you know, change over those rules. So if I wanted the elbows to bend at another point, I can just kind of point to where, okay, this is where I want them to change and transition and then go to elbow flip threshold and just change this until you see that bend happen. And now that will be your new bend uh, point. So you can fool around with this depending on the character's arms or length or whatever. Um, but the two of those, uh, uh, doing the sticks and the draggable and uh, arm IK together, that's how you make a, a decent looking arm. And so that's all there is to it. Uh, if you've been following along, you have now created your own custom Photoshop character and it should be doing all the things you would expect. The face tracking, the eyes, the blinking, um, be able to drag the arms. Uh, you've got your triggers here, uh, all the different things you can do for your character to make them expressive. So this is meant to be a starting point. Um, this is a basic, simple character, but there is so much more the character animator has to offer. You can add head turns, you can add walk cycles, you can add particle effects, uh, you can add cycle layers, frame by frame animations, um, just a ton of stuff. And uh, I think the best place to learn is uh, checking out those example puppets in this start workspace, looking at how these guys were made and say, oh, okay, that's how do you make a clay sculpted character? How do you add head turns in a walk cycle or you know this, this bongo gorilla character or magnets with Heather? Um, these are great learning resources and there should be a lot of videos as well to help teach you. So um, try online tutorials that'll take you to our video page and this will have all the latest and greatest things about uh, you know, if you want to do live streaming or learn more about triggers or physics or uh, that, that illustrator puppet I was talking about earlier or eye rigging, um, all of that stuff is here and it should make it um, pretty simple. We, there's example files for all of these. Um, this will kind of take you to that next level. And so that's it. So now you could press record, go ahead, record your puppet performance, uh, move around, talk, uh, drag, press the triggers, you know, whatever you want to do and uh, press spacebar to stop. And now you've got your timeline down here and you've got a recording that, you know, you could then export uh, into uh, Adobe Media Encoder or a ping sequence and wave or dynamic link it into After Effects or Premiere to add this character over top of other things. Um, there's a lot that you can do with it. Uh, you can also uh, export a puppet. So if you wanted to share this as that dot puppet file, like we originally did in the beginning, you can just go to File, Export, Puppet, and then save this 
as any type of, you know, name it whatever you want. So let's call this guy bananas and save. So you can share it with your friends, you can upload it, you can even sell it on a marketplace. People are starting to do that. So there's a lot of options uh, there. So I hope this was a good introduction to creating your own custom Photoshop characters. If you ran into any issues, um, uh, you know, your puppet's heads are falling off, uh, the hair isn't working right, the arms, the hand position didn't work, the best place to get individual direct help where you can share your dot puppet file and other your video or screenshot is on the official character animator forums. And if you do make something with this, we would love to see it, uh, put it out there on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, wherever using the hashtag character animator. That's what uh, myself and the rest of the character animator team look at to see the latest things that everyone is creating. So that's it for this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching and have fun.